Oh, what do you want to start with? Um, I don't know. I don't know where to start. I guess we could start with which one's moving along quicker, the center of town. That one, well, you know, we got approval, blah, blah, blah. We had that last meeting. So I am working with me and Brian, I think, are going to try meeting with Berkshire Design, I think either next Monday or Tuesday to see. We can't remember how much. I mean, we can look through their contract, but we're just going to meet with them to see what they have left to do on the original contract and um, if it wasn't on there, maybe ask if they are probably be an hourly charge, but see if they'd be willing to help us get like that skid unit and that, get it the package together to get that out to bids as soon as we can. That way, you know, I mean, at least, if we get that out for bids and get the bids back and award the bid, even if the thing takes two or three months, four months, whatever it is for it to get here, we should at least at that point have the design specs so we can actually, you know what I mean? We could start digging. We'll know where the pipes need to come up out of the ground. Uh, well, it's going on with the center town. Nicholas sent, I didn't send you guys that. I'll send you guys that. Nicholas sent an email to his district members warning them that this was going to start. And once it's connected, that the, the water hookup fees are due. What's the other thing I got going on? Oh, the electric poles. But I think. I think for me to request a poll, I think we have to have an electrician do it. That means they got to put a poll on the other side of the road. So I Where don't know. Where would they put it? Huh? Where would they put it? Right. It'd be, I think when we figured it'd be from that fire hydrant, it'd be probably 50 to 60 feet north of that down the hill. But they got to replace, they got to set that pole. But when I talked with an engineer from, or met with an engineer from Eversource last year out there, the pole that's on the corner, right in that center island, that triangle there, they got to replace that one because it ain't big enough. So they actually got to do two of them. And like she said, if it was their poles, it'd be a pretty quick thing. But being a Verizon poles, they usually take longer to get the new pole set in. Well, well, like I, is, I don't, huh? Maybe we can talk to somebody at the phone company. I know a few people there. You know a couple people there. Maybe we can get the right person to talk to. And... Right. Maybe get it pushed to get in a little quicker. I mean, it's still. It's still going to take time because once we put the request in, they still got to go to the a selectmen's meeting for poll hearings. And <laughs> so, I mean, it will. I think those would be, we could at least, you know what I mean? If we could get those two things going, it seems like we could actually, you know what I mean? We could start pushing it along. Because I think those, especially the, the specs on the skid unit that we'd be getting would be the big one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we can go over there and, and grade out land and all that, but we really can't throw them pipes up through the ground until we have some kind of idea. Well, you, you got to get permission from Ann first, right? Not to put the thing out for bid. No, 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 but before you start digging and. Well, it's not even permission. We got to make, we got to get the easement bigger. Right. Yeah, so all that's got to go through. But that wouldn't, yeah, you know I mean, that wouldn't, 
that doesn't stop us from putting at least that skid unit net out for bids. Cause I think, Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that's really the only, maybe some of the electrical equipment, depending on what the cost is for all this stuff. But I think between the skid unit and the generator are pretty close to, I think maybe the only things that really have to go out to bids. I don't think nothing else would really, I don't think anything else meets the threshold. I mean, a lot of it, yeah, meets the threshold of call up three or four or five, whatever different companies to get quotes. But I don't think they really, I don't think they meet the threshold of actually having to go into the books and on the register or whatever and actually go out to public big. Yeah, I think think the two risers would probably come up on our easement already because we got that 30 foot easement and we got to stay away from the main. The building itself will be on the new easement. Most of right. It. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think the risers will probably end up close to, yeah, somewhere maybe five feet into that easement. Yeah, because we still, you remember, we still got to leave enough room there to make that H. That bypass? Yeah, between uh, the house or the building and the uh, water main. Yeah, and that main comes, you might also say it's pretty much right up the middle of it. Yeah, we still got to have, what, 20 feet behind the, behind the building? We got to have 20 feet from the cemetery side. Yeah. So, I mean, I in a... I think I'm pretty sure that's where that building's going. Is that right there? That front of that building going is going to go at that 20 or 21 foot mark. Because pushing it out farther brings you closer to that wetland thing because of that stream. Yeah, we'll just stay with the plot plan that uh, conservation already approved. So, right. By the way, just to know why you're doing this, I've called up Google Earth and focus in trying to learn the geography of this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so is, that, is that storage tank the round thing up there? Is it? Is yep. it okay. Yep. And, and I see a little wetland in a, in a stream bed, but then there's a little there's a little road there on the south side of the cemetery. Is that your access road? Goes no, that's somebody's driveway or something that's yeah that's the driveway up to the house that sits like right below the tank yeah okay where the building's gonna go if you follow that driveway all the way back you see that yellow barn yeah all right to the north it's this thing's gonna sit across from that yellow to the other side of the cemetery yeah okay the other side of the cemetery yeah that's what i thought yeah so that's what it's okay <laughs> Who, needs kind of, huh? Who needs a helicopter? In this yeah, yeah, you get Google Earth. <laughs> yeah, so that's where that one sits. The booster, the booster pumps for this one. I think they're getting close to having the package put back together to re to resubmit to the DEP for their approval. But the I can't remember George. Can you? I can't remember the name of that company. Is it Mustang LLC? I'm not sure. Yeah, the one the marijuana guys coming in. They want. They want a price and a letter from you guys saying they can, that we will, or they're able to get the water that they need for the greenhouses and a price of what it's going to cost for the filters and that before. Yeah. I mean, they're, from what I understand, they're ready to go and start going with this because I think they want to start. It sounds like they want to start construction maybe in the spring. 
So I got a quote. I got a quote from Webs for the filters for say roughly eighty four hundred dollars, and then a quote from Dankris for around eighty eight hundred dollars to install them. Yeah, plus our building price didn't go up a whole lot. I still haven't got the price on the trusses, but oh, we're oh, back to that one. Yeah. <laughs> the old price, the... the old price with the trusses was $65.22. The new price without the trusses is $69.23. So, you know, plus the, the trusses last time were a thousand dollars. So what's it? So we got to figure about ten grand for the building. Yeah, about that I would say. You know, plus the foundation. I think they we had a price for the foundation and the floor four thousand dollars before. I'm yeah, not sure. So, so we're yeah, still labor, looking at. Yeah, labor ahead. will probably be the same, but I imagine concrete went up. Yeah, so probably like fifteen grand for the building then, somewhere around there. Just the basic building. Yeah. I'm not sure how much uh, metal roofing will be over the price of shingles. I don't think it'd be double. It maybe, went, maybe it just went this. up. Yeah, it just went up last week. I think it was like 69 or 70 cents a foot. Yeah. But, you know, the quote included all the hardy plank and all the trim and everything. So we're so still I think looking, we're, Yeah, still we're still good. well. Because I think when I look, I was looking the other day, I think I budgeted way back, I don't know, what was it, four years ago already? Yeah, I think you had $70,000. I did. It was seventy grand for the building. That's having somebody build it. But, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we know we're saving some there now. I just, I don't know what the cost of, I mean, I got, I want to see all I really, I think all I need to, think I might only need to buy the ductile iron. I think I have all the other stuff already. It's still sitting in the barn, the valves and stuff. The valves, we're going to have to, <clears throat> tapping the main will be an expense. That's going to be an expensive one. That's another thing I was, good thing you just said that. I was going to call Prescott up and see. Yeah, I mean, what their schedule looks like for doing it. I mean, it's going to be tough. I can't really give them a day to do it. But, yeah, I mean, at least we can tell if they're booked a month in advance or two months. Because I don't know anybody besides them around here that does tapping. There's got to be, there's gotta be other people around. Yeah. And we're doing eight, right? Yeah, 16 by eight. Yeah. Was that a 16 inch line coming down from the tank? You tapping? Into it, put eight. Put eight yeah, okay. yeah, eight off of the sixteen yep. into the building. Yep. Then I already got. I mean, that. Remember, I tapped that three quarter inch line last year, George, for that just to put a pressure gauge on it. Yeah. That I think will just keep. We'll just run that into the building to make our domestic water. Well, it's that and. Then just in case, you know, like down here, we have to dig that trench to move that where I, where it reads the chlorine residual a hundred feet down line. <laughs> you know what I mean? We already have the tap on it. We also would just run that pipe right along with the main right into the booster station in case we need it. Yeah, that should be close to a hundred feet by the time you make the corner and everything. Right. 
Yeah, I figured that will just leave and run it right alongside the main. What did that tap cost us for Egypt Road? I don't remember. When we went across Route 5. Oh, I'd have to look back. It wasn't, was it 800 bucks, 600? What gets expensive from Prescott is if they got to take, when they take that, <laughs> when they hook their little crane onto the, uh, the trench box and they use their trench box, that's when it gets expensive. I want to say it was like eight hundred, six or eight hundred dollars from the tap that eight by eight down there. Yeah, and that's pretty. That sixteen inch main right there is deep. It's got to be. Well, at we least, were there when we dug it up. Yeah, last it's got to be almost there. ten feet of cover. <laughs> yeah, because it came up over the top of the hill. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's something I can. I can find that out. A note for myself. Of course, I imagine the tap and sleeve will be twice or three times as much. Yeah, that'll be expensive. That won't be a cheap one. Have you talked to Keith any about working up there? No. No, nobody really wants to do anything until we get everything. At least the easement done. At least the easement done. Once the easement's done, then I'm sure everybody will want to get going on this thing. Like today would be a beautiful day to work up there. Sunny. Yeah. A little cool. So you throw in a question, is, is, is this connection to the village system being driven by the people in the district, that village district? This, is, this goes back how many years, you guys? <laughs> back to when we started. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, 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 no, I guess it just, I mean, it's been something that's been hung around and hung around and hung around and then finally what was it, three years ago or so when we got that committee together and we finally, everybody agreed on stuff and finally made it happen? <laughs> you know, the whole thing is we could have done this back when we formed the water system. Right, just put it all in the building. But there was people up there that didn't want to join the water system because they felt they were had their own little private one. And those people are gone now and yeah. we still have to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they run out of water. I mean, that's any water permit can happen, but yeah, I mean, it don't, the way I see it, and I think Nicholas would agree with me, is like whether you have 400 taps on your system or 40 taps on your system, you still, it still costs the same amount to run it. And, you know, I mean, it gets for only 40 houses. To keep the system going, you know what I mean? It gets expensive. Sure. Well, it's a bad one. And, and uh, after they, the 86 amendments to the State Drinking Water Act, when they had to do service water filtration was mandatory, they had to deal with a few fire districts up on the, the islands, Lake Champlain. You had these little fire districts with a lot of, some people were seasonal, some people were lived there permanently, but they, they, the state wanted them to all join forces and build a treatment plant and make one system so that they could all, you know, instead of all having to incur the cost of, of filtering the lake water on their own. And they, none of those little fire districts were like, bro, 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 I join up with those guys. You know? <laughs> 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 it took them 10 years to get those guys to, to finally cave and actually do what they, it made sense. You know? so, anyway, yeah. same concept. <laughs> So I think I think that's it on that one for now. They say getting back to the booster pumps are down here. 
it's roughly about sixteen to set about seventeen thousand dollars for the two new the two filters, the reactor vessel, uh, that three way valve, and then like I said, Dankris gave me a quote of just shy of nine thousand to install them. So I guess, I mean, the only thing I am missing is I'll have to, I don't know, draw up some little plan and just kind of guess on like the pipes and the fittings and the hangers they're going to need to add that into the price. Well, we got quite a few, quite a few hangers because we were originally going in the back room where the chlorine was. Yeah, but that's for the booster pumps. This ain't for the booster pumps. This is just for the filters. For the filters. Well, they can hang them. They're going to have to hang them from the ceiling, the pipes, because they're out in the middle of the room now. Right. Yeah, I would imagine. I would say that's probably the best place is hang them from the ceiling. Unless we make a bracket or something, you know what I mean, where they can be hung from the floor. Well... Then it's just something to trip over. I'd rather see it come from the ceiling. We'll get some, you know, stainless steel hangers and threaded rod, stainless steel. Yeah, but will so they? I mean, you know this more than me. Um, would they be? You know, I mean, if we take, say, you use half-inch threaded rod, if these things are hanging from the ceiling three feet, is that going to support these pipes enough? Well, I would think so because that—that that was the original way they Dankers wanted to do it. Is hanging it from the sealer. That's the way they always did it. So you weren't worried water hammer or nothing? No. Because you, you don't have, a, you're not going to have a long run. You're just going to have enough room between the filters to walk in between them. Well, right. Yeah. We're only going to keep, what, two feet? Just yeah. enough to get in and out of them. So you can program the computer if you had to. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to really look at that because I do have to get in between them to get to them damn heads. So we'll have to look to see. Yeah, you know I mean, if we can keep if we can keep these things up, the pipes up high enough so you can actually walk. Yeah, you know I mean, maybe we got to come out three feet so you can leave that two foot gap so you can walk without yeah. banging into the pipes. Well, also we got to pour a pad right to lift them up. I think it'd be the smart thing, right? Just keep them all the same level. Yeah. Instead of dropping these. Well, at the same time, we can pour the pad for the generator out there when you did yeah. concrete. Yeah. Actually, that pad we could do right now, actually, you know, inside the building. Yeah, we can figure out, you know, I mean, where they're going to sit. But. That would be what you might call it. Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't we be charging them because that's part of the filters? I don't know how much money they're gonna expend toward the project. I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking if the filters are 82 and his is 88, so that's 17,000. I mean. I can see three thousand dollars easily for pipes and hangers. Yeah, would you say so in valves? <laughs> well, just how much we spent the last time. Yeah, we've got quite a bit of four inch. Is it four inch pipe that we bought? We didn't buy any two or three. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know if they'd use they. They wouldn't use no four inch. To install these. I don't know. Everything's two inch. Unless. Oh, yeah. Unless you're going to bring the main pipes that are hanging on the back walls out. I would think Otherwise, that's what they would. I think that's what they would do. You don't think they just come off of those like they did to all the filters with two inch and back into the those main ones well, two inch. I would think that they'd come out with their main trunk line 
and then branch off of that because it's so tight back there now. Yeah. Try to cut into it. The thing would be to get Bo down there and let him look at it and say, you know, he needs this or that. Yeah, right. maybe I'll have to ask Brian what, how I go about that. Maybe it'd be worth just seeing if, I mean, even if we had to, it cost us a couple hundred bucks, see if Frank could just send him down for whatever, a day or half a day or that. And just to look at it and maybe give us a list of what we needed and go from yeah. there rather yeah. than try to guess. I Yeah, I don't see why I can't do that. I mean, I know, you know, he, he's not going to come out. He's not going to send him out here for nothing, but no, even but if it costs a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, just take it out of the budget. Yeah. So am I, am I correct with Cynth, as I understand it, this additional uh, treatments to two treatment tanks is all being done for that greenhouse that wants the water? Yeah, they, this was, I don't know, has it been a year? It's probably been a year now. I remember getting wind of it early, but I don't know. Yeah, the, there's a, there's a marijuana growing company i think it's mustang llc i think is the name of it don't quote me on that and they're gonna i don't know if they're buying or whatever to them greenhouses and they agreed about a year ago that they for them that for us to provide them the water they they'd purchase and install two more of these filters so we could get our pumping capacity up to the 250 which Talking with Lucy, the engineer, we still won't reach 250 because our we could, but we can't. <laughs> the DP wants at least 20 pounds of residual in reserve, and the pumps, our well pumps, with our well pumps, and then these filters, and we can reach 240, and we'll be down to that 20 pounds in reserve. So I mean. Technically, we could hit the 250. We'd just drop that down to maybe 15 or 10. But yeah, they were willing to purchase and install <coughs> two more of the filters so we could get our pumping capacity up. I think they just, they just needed the guarantee that we could give them 30,000 gallons a day. That was right. the whole deal. He, the guy we met with from California, I think they were from. Yes. That uh, they talked about uh, putting a bigger tank in the ground at the greenhouses to because they save all the water from rainwater and everything, and they use that. But they're talking about if we get a dry spell, you know, there will be no water in the ground for them. And that's where they came up with just 30,000 gallons a day. Yeah, I can't remember. Go ahead, John. No, are these are the ones uh, on the cell or just chestnut pulled oh, by chestnut? No, uh, right across from the fire station. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought it was, but yeah, the one with the purple or green lights, red lights. I'm yeah, not sure what all the colors learned, do. Well, they roam around in the area. I'm starting to learn things. But, <laughs> but I mean, I my for my sense, like if these guys want the water and they're willing to pay for it, send them the bill. Right. Or it's going to be a good idea to, to get a good solid estimate for the full cost and present it to them before we start to say, this is what it's going to cost you. Right. That's why I'm wondering, like George says, probably the only number I don't know now is the, you know, I mean, the piping, the hangers, that the valves, that miscellaneous stuff. I, <laughs> so that's what like me and George are just talking it's, I think it's worth spending. I mean, if he charges us a couple hundred bucks to get the, the guy we're talking about is the guy that was down here and installed all these mm -hmm. and piped all these. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I can't see him charging much more than a couple hundred bucks if he came down here for a half a day or so. And like you said, George, just 
just give me a list and then I can take that list and go to webs or that and say, okay, how much does this list cost me? <laughs> hey, do you yep. think he could get all that information off of the uh, diagrams? No, because I get maybe. Yeah, maybe. But I don't know. It's still. It's easier when you're face to face with them. <laughs> no, I know. But he uh, he's familiar with the whole thing. Right. But I mean, to get these filters in, I mean, I bet you me and him spend hours with each other just going over. Yeah, I mean, scribbling on a piece of paper. Okay, what if we go this way with it? And then, then we'd find out, no, we can't go that way because it'd run into this. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess you could do it off of paper. I just, I don't know. I think it'd be so much easier just face to face. <laughs> well, I think everybody looks at something different. You know, I could do it one way where somebody right. else comes in and they do it another way. They both do the same thing, but... I just like yeah. it the way they did such a good job of piping over there. Everything was neat, level, vertical. Yeah. You know, and if we can get the pop people to pay for it, beautiful. Well, they they they, they have to pay for it. Everyone said they would pay for it. Yeah. Right. So I wouldn't. Right. I would say, you know, it's just if I'm the guy for the pot company, just give me some hard numbers I can lean on. Yeah, that's what they're looking for. If you must, in case. And that way I know what my business, what it's going to cost me. And yep. if I don't like it, I'll argue with you, but at least I'll know as opposed to hitting me later. Like, well, you think it's going to be 12,000 in terms of being 20. Yeah. Yeah. If we could get them to pay for a little bit of the booster pump too, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Throw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be making money on that stuff. So, you know? Yeah. And they want they the have water. Good, they have a good site in with the greenhouses there and everything. They don't have to construct anything. Yeah. I'm looking at the Zoom. I'm looking at well, they got a, Google Earth right now. <laughs> yeah. They get a bunch. They get a bunch they get a build. Well, he was talking about instead of putting a fence, putting a solid wall that faces Route 5. Right. But they get a build. Yeah, I mean, they get a, they're building bathrooms inside. They're building offices. I mean, it's, yeah, the big base is there. The growing space is there. I now they're just... You when you look but, at the whole project as a whole, the water is very small. That's right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Oh, don't, a, don't skip on <laughs> <up. Yeah. laughs> right. yeah. Dropping a bucket to them. And to me, yeah. I would want hard numbers and I would throw in a 10% contingency because you don't know what might happen and give them that figure and then they'll budget it and or let you know if they don't like it. But yeah. They're likely to say that, especially in California, like I said, really, that's all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get water out there. You know? <laughs> they literally, there literally were plans in Southern California that were on the table to take water out of the Southern, uh, the, the, in the Canadian Rockies, piping it across the plains to the Mississippi, adding it to the Mississippi, pulling it out of the Mississippi, pumping it across the Southern plains to get it into the lower Colorado. Oh. That's real. That's a fact. I read about that years and years ago. I was like stunned. But uh, they, got, they got held up and stopped by that. So, anyway. They also wanted the Columbia River over there. They couldn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what do you think? So I'll try. You guys agree? I'll try getting a hold of. I'll get a hold of Frank, and maybe that do try doing that. Yeah, try to get him to come down and look at it. We can meet meet them there and just make up a list and go to web. Yeah. Then we'll have, yeah, I mean, that's the only number I'm missing for these guys is the parts, the pipe parts, pipe valves, check valves, hangers. Well, I'm all for it. When did Lucy think she can get something out on the booster pumps? I don't know. She hasn't really said nothing yet. But I keep I keep seeing these emails. They got they're training a new guy. Oh god. It's like, it's like starting all over again. <laughs> Lucy's yeah, I mean, 
leaving us or what? No, 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 no. They must be just training a new engineer. So he must have, you know, I mean, he must be working with somebody. Yeah, you know I mean, because these guys, it'd be nice if we could have, but we know we don't want to. But, yeah, you know I mean, these guys are starting, they know nothing about these filters. You know what I mean? So they're emailing Watersoft, and Watersoft is emailing them back. And it's like, Deja vu. It's like I remember seeing all these emails, <laughs> the same, the same questions. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'd be. It's going to be that much longer. I'll email her and see if I can get an answer. <sighs> but it doesn't sound like it's that much longer. I don't know what else I had on there since we met last. Oh, our hydrant tool came in. We had that two-inch saddle break down at Norris's. Uh, you got the generator for Westbrook, right? Yeah, I'm in the... I almost got the... I'll have Brian review it one more time. I almost got the, uh, what do you call it? Application put together for the zoning board. So we got to go for, man, my mind's blank today, a variance because we can't meet the setbacks. So Westbrook. we're hoping, huh? Westbrook. Huh? Oh, yeah, the booster station there. When are you going to get on the agenda there? What? When are you going to get on their agenda? Well, I think me and Brian are going to try putting, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work out this way, but because we got to go for, I don't know, he explained it, a special permit for the, the one in the center of town. Yeah. So we we're thinking we just put the two of them on the same meeting. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> Which ain't going to happen this month, but hopefully their next February's meeting of theirs. Yeah, there's not much left to this month. No, what, eight, <clears throat> eight days, nine days? And slowly, Georgian, I got I got two of those letters back now. Oh, you did? That's it. <laughs> the other guy, he went he went MIA again. Our our friend from Lee. <laughs> I haven't heard from him. I'm going I'll email him again today. See if he says something, but I haven't heard from him for a while. That's not unusual. No, but <laughs> <laughs> but I did email Mike asking if he heard from him and Mike McGrath. If he heard from him and the last time he heard from him was in December. What else is going on? Oh, I should have next week. I'll probably next week, either next week or a week after, I'll do take them PFOS samples and get those down. Uh, I think it's Agawam or Ludlow. No, East Long Meadow, maybe. I don't know. They got to go down there somewhere. What's the name of, what's the name of the company? Uh... Contest? Yeah, they're in uh, Agawam Industrial Park. Yeah, there you go. Now, these guys say East Long Meadow. 
Well, well, maybe they got more, they moved or something, but they used to be, or unless they got a lab, maybe spread around. Yeah, it's looking at Spruce, Spruce Street in East Long Meadow. And yeah, maybe they just have more than one lab now. But yeah, I'll do those either probably next week. Yeah. Now, where you have to take your samples for that, right out of our well, or? So you got, <laughs> you got to look at that again. Going to do a raw water out of one, well one, raw water out of well two. I think finished out, finished out of both of them. I got to look at that list. There's 14 bottles I got to fill. <laughs> I, I can't remember the list where I got to take them from. You wonder what happened to the simple little water system that we started off with. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, I don't Oh, there's just more than one out of some spots. Yes, yeah, so a total of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, a total of thirteen samples. What are your regular monitoring schedule, Wayne? No, this is for that PFOS. Oh, okay. Something else. No, the regular our regular monitoring stuff. Who Satonic does it? They just, it's like, I mean, Billy started that a long time ago and it just, I don't know, it makes sense to just let them, they charge us 50 bucks a month to, you know what I mean? Yeah. They get the same sample and schedule and they, when they, when we need something sampled for something, they come down, grab it, bring it back, test it, and then send us a copy and the DEP a copy of the results. Is Berkshire Enviro Labs what used to be Berkshire Enviro Labs? Yeah, same company. Yeah, yeah. I, remember, I remember them. Okay, that's fine. I just, I just, I just, my head, I'm always like, don't forget, it, it, it's, it's your system, it's our system. DEP doesn't flag the in between guy if something goes wrong. It, right. Us. So. Yeah. No, I still. Yeah, I mean, I still, every month I'll look at it, or every, actually every week we usually do, every Monday or Tuesday, we'll look at our sampling schedule to make sure, you know what I mean? Just to make sure they're not forgetting something. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I used to run to Billy all over the place in, in the Berkshire Hills. I, I remember bumping into him once at the Worthington store, you know, and something. So there, there he was. And, but, you know, <clears throat> anyway, is he retired? Who? Bill, the guy. Yeah. Used to run it. I think his last yeah, name. No, now it's. I don't see Tom as much no more either. Now uh, Nick, Nick, Nick. I can't think of his last name. Yeah, Nick doesn't matter. But, you know, those little businesses like that expanded a lot, and you know, and you came up with the new sampling schedules and all that. And, uh, there's a yeah. lot of water systems like this, like this one, that just you know, it's pain in the ass, quite frankly, to do all that sampling, keeping track of it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I guess we'll move on to. Is there anything you guys want to add to the annual town report? <laughs> what you got in it already? Huh? What do you got in it already? I don't know. I'll send you guys a copy of it before I send it in to actually send it in. <laughs> okay. Then
No, I can't think of no. no. I'm sure there's more. <laughs> Who's uh, taking care of the stuff from the state for Paul? Or in regards? Well, some kind of citation or whatever um, recognition. I kind of, I kind of dropped the ball on that one. I forgot about it. <laughs> I'll get back on that. I wrote the little, the little thing out the sender in that. I can't remember if I sent it or not. I must have not because I haven't heard back from him. So I'll get back on that. Well, wasn't JP or somebody getting them one from the state? Uh huh. Wasn't JP yeah. getting the plaque no, or we, something? No, me, Amy, me and me and Amy got into it, and then JP was looking into it, and then. Can't remember the lady's name. I don't know. We were emailing back and forth with somebody high up in the state or whatever, and they just said to send them, send them like, like a sentence that you want written on this thing, and then they'll get it processed or written or printed, whatever you want to call it. Never heard back from them. No, I did, but I can't remember. I haven't heard back from them since I made the little, since I wrote the thing. So maybe I forgot, I might have forgot the email on the thing or the email never went through. So I'll look into that. I'll email her. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, I haven't heard nothing. I don't know if we're going to try it. It might be too late for that. Didn't it? Wasn't I telling you guys about that Green Communities grant? Yeah, you talked, you talked to me about it. Yeah, that energy grant. Yeah. But like me and Brian said, I mean, it, could, it was going to be... I don't know if it's too late. I don't know if it's not. Yeah, I mean, there's a long so exist. But I did get a hold. Who did I talk to? I talked with Chris from Berkshire Design, asking if that's some, if it's something they could do if they if they were capable of doing. Uh, I don't even know what you call it—an energy audit, a pump audit. <laughs> if they were, if there's something they could do to kind of show that the pumps that we have now, if we replace them with these pumps, this is how much energy these use, and this is what the new ones would use. And he said he said it sounded like there was something they could do, but he'd let us, you know what I mean? If we ever started it, then he'd let us know if it was something they couldn't. So it hasn't really, that really hasn't gone nowhere yet. I'd just be very careful of how many uh, extra things we had to do when we get involved in a grant. It seems every grant that we ever got involved with, there was so much stuff that you had to do to <laughs> complete the grant that it wasn't worth it in the end. Yeah. There's always hoops. Yeah. There's, right. <laughs> there's always little clauses. You know, wedge head muscles and monkey flowers and... <laughs> Turtles. I don't think I've ever seen a turtle down there other than the one that got run over in the driveway. <laughs> I so think those turtles get run over that little driveway. <laughs> <laughs> the uh is that the only one? Yeah, that's I think that's the only thing we're still paying for. We got one more payment on monitoring the turtles. It's either the turtles or the mussels. I think it's the turtles. The, 
the, I've, the never flower. Seen, I, I've never huh? seen a monkey flower yet. No, me neither. Just pictures. I haven't seen either one of the three. I mean, no, I did see a turtle. I seen a turtle, but I haven't seen the mussel or the flower. Just the habitat for them. So, huh? it's a, it's the right habitat for those creatures. So they figure they must be there. Oh no, they found them. Yeah. It. We've. I don't know if you know the whole the whole backstory about moving the Mill River away from the wells. I think you told me something about that. Yeah, when I was down there last time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we spent. I'm almost positive. We spent more on monitoring and moving that dwarf mussel, the box turtle, and the monkey flower than it did to actually move the river. <laughs> but that's what they say we got to do. So we argue with them. Well, the green thing is such as it's energy efficiency stuff, right? I mean, if you replacing pumps or putting on variable speed drives or something to yeah you put exactly what the green if it, what the grants all about is because Waitley's a green community is they'll give you grants or they'll give you money to I guess you'd call it do energy upgrades to use less energy. I mean down here I mean like Brian said he said try think of something down here because I guess the water department's the second biggest user of electricity in town besides I think the I think the elementary school has us beat. So like I told him, I said, well, there's really there's only three things. I said, there's the pumps that are probably the biggest users. You have the old lights in here and you have the old heaters in here, but the amount of time that them lights and the heaters are on. I mean, maybe the heaters, if you replace them, you'd save a little bit. But to me, the ones that suck the juice are the pumps. The only thing, unless they make, unless they make a more efficient pump, you still got to have a big motor down there, 15 or 20 horse motor. Well, I talked with... A couple pump guys, one from Webbs and one's from, uh, I can't remember. But they asked how long the pumps have been in there. And I said, I don't know. I said roughly maybe 15 years. And they, they were figuring that we'd probably save five to six. We'd probably use five to six less energy or electricity just by replacing the bearings in those pumps now and like they said the new motors are more efficient yeah i don't know it's, it's kind of, i was like really they're like yeah I said, especially which i mean i guess you get it you have a bearing you know what i mean that's 20 years old you put a new one in you're gonna have yeah you know i mean you should have less friction so you should use less energy but the, the side kicker side, you, get, to, you get grant money to replace the pumps it's like right. it's, but it's not something you do tomorrow you got to plan it out right but that's the whole thing i mean the the big kicker with that grant is is you have to show they'll give you the money but you got to show them that over the life expectancy of in our case the pumps you're going to see a savings. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if it, I guess what it comes down to in E layman's terms, if they give you 50 grand to replace these pumps, you got to show them over 20 years that you're going to save that $50,000. <laughs> Which, like I said, we looked into solar, but I don't think for what it would cost to put solar up down here to mount the, I mean, you need a lot of solar panels to cover what this place uses and i think for the cost of what it costs you to put those solar panels in they say they're good for what 20 or 25 years i don't i i think you'd be cheaper just staying the way you are yeah the panels will last longer than that they, they the, the newfangled ones 
in 20 years time, they, they drop very little in their product productivity. Uh, it's yeah. Gonna, obviously, you know, if they get damaged or something or, uh, but yeah, I, to me, it would seem that if, if the pump is that much more efficient, all you got to, what's the electricity consumption record over the last, you know, call all your bills and see what they run in, then get data on the new pumps and see if it, it will actually show enough savings to be worth the hassle. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, I'd love to. I mean, we talked about, I talked, I started throwing the idea around electric solar panels around here for a while, but I really haven't got an answer if we could put them down below or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it means you ain't got, there's not much room up top here to put any, but you got that big field down below, but I don't know. While everything's still being monitored, the flowers and everything, if they would allow us to put these things in the ground. <laughs> oh, and the, the greatest thing is uh, since that new telemetry got put in up at the I haven't lost a signal yet. Well, it's a different frequency too, so that could have made a big difference. Yeah, it's, well, he said it's where the old system was like the two antennas have to be seeing each other. This one, he said, is more, I don't know, he was adjusting it with a CB radio. He said it's more like a 360 degree band it's sending out or something. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I mean? But it's not even that. I mean, the batteries haven't even gone dead up there. Usually those go dead by now. <laughs> hey, we're, we're. I think that's it. I can't think of nothing else. I had to get sworn in. I, I let I called Lynn never got me. She hasn't got back to me. I'm supposed to get sworn in, so I haven't done that yet. So I guess I'm not legit at the moment. So <laughs> look okay. That's kind of intriguing to me. It's like sworn in to be a water commissioner. Like, where's where's my Joe Biden Bible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like I needed a big, you know, uh a little key to unlock it or something. <laughs> Oh, and I should, by next month, I'll have, I would say probably by, well, no, I don't think we're in such a time crunch this year to do the budget. Because I don't think the, no, as I don't think the annual town meet, I think it's going to be held in June again, not April, outside again. Yeah. So I don't, I haven't heard nothing, but usually by now, yeah, I mean, he what? We're starting to work on them and send stuff in. The finance committee's been meeting, but. <laughs> you, you'll level fund it again this year or are you gonna put in something extra? I don't know. I'll level fund it and then maybe make a couple notes on the bottom and send it around to you guys and you know what I mean? See if we wanna add some or take some out. I mean, really, well, no, we can't level fund it. We'd have to go up a little bit. Because you got to cover, you know, we're going to burn more electricity. You know what I mean? So you got to put that up some, especially, I mean, this is going to be a tough one because we might have to bump. I'm thinking we got to bump up. Not a lot, but I think we're going to have to bump up a bunch. Especially if if that center of town booster station comes on. That's going to add, you know what I mean? That's going to add, operate, it'll add heating costs, it'll add electricity costs, probably cable costs. My guess is they're probably going to add, change my sampling sites and I'm going to have more Mm -hmm. bacteria will. samples to take so that's going to up our 
budget for the sampling. <laughs> They'll probably make you reevaluate lead and copper sites too. Yeah, Just they those they, they said that and they're actually happy with that one. I uh I just had to do mine, do ours last year. And I don't know, maybe it was just me, but I was like, you know what? This is going to happen. I'm just going to, I'll do it for just the ones that are on the system. But then I also did it adding those buildings into it and it doesn't change it. <sighs> the buildings, you know what I mean? The, the buildings are too old. Yeah, so you know what I mean? We're going to, there's going to be spots where it's going to have to increase. Either a whole lot or a bunch. Or <laughs> <laughs> the hard numbers. <laughs> well, that, yeah, you know I mean, the, that booster station going online is a crapshoot, I guess. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know what the thing's going to burn for electricity. I don't know what it's going to cost. It shouldn't cost much to heat it. You know what I mean? Will an extra eight thousand dollars cover that for the year? So at least, you know what I mean. Which I'm thinking probably would be enough because if it does come online, it's only going to be for half the year probably. So at least you'll get six months of data and something you can go off of <laughs> for the following year's budget. Yeah, well, it should be a little, little bit more than Westbrook, I would think, for electricity, because you still have what those two small pumps, or you got five small pumps. Right. Well, they're small pumps, but big pumps. <laughs> I figure. What is Westbrook? How many gallons a minute were those? Uh, I'd have to look. There, but there may be fifty or six. No. Yeah, no, because we can get about 80. So maybe probably like 80 gallon a minute pump somewhere around there, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, where those, those, will, those will be 200, I think. Up yeah, there. these will be five pumps. They'll be 200 gallons a piece. Yeah, so they're, each of these pumps is probably both of Westbrook's put together. Yeah, I mean, that, I don't know. It's, I never... I know when we used to be able to grab the when we grabbed the hydrants at the top of the hill, and it and the system was running just off the pumps, we could we could maintain about eighty gallons to the minute. But that's pretty good on top of the hill. That's quite a rise. Right, and that's before I had applied dynamics come and actually fix so the other pump would actually turn on. <laughs> You know what I mean? So now that both pumps will actually come on if they're needed. You know what I mean? I bet you you'd be you're you gotta be over a hundred gallons a minute plus going up that hill if needed. I mean, they're definitely not as big as what these ones are gonna be, but yeah, and that one Westbrook during the summer runs around 200, 200 to two hundred and twenty dollars a month for electricity. Winter time, it's like 120. Yeah, so you could figure no more than $500 a month then, tops. In operating. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what I was saying. So I'm thinking somewhere around six, seven, eight grand for if the thing's running for a half a year, should be enough to cover it. So you can get, you know what I mean? At, then you can at least get a few months data to know. I mean, it'd be nice to have a whole year's worth, but. How many users are gonna be on that addition? There's, there's 44, but 30, 38 houses. Yeah. I think that's what, if you minus the center school, the, no, so probably it's either 40 or 42, John. If you take out the cemetery and that and the center school that ain't being used, 
So I was thinking like something like 15,000 gallons a day more. Well, I think like that's that. all they were using is eight, right? A day. Well, that's all they could pump. Was that what yeah. it was? Yeah, Nicholas says he could pump nine or 10,000 a day. And if they used 8,000, he was scrambling. <laughs> well, I just, you know, for rough out calculation of 40, you know, 40, 40 homes at 400 gallons a day, which is high, but you know, you throw that out there, it's like yeah. 16,000. So it was sixteen thousand. I was. I'm thinking back to the to the well pumps. How much more are they going to run? More electrical costs. You know, right. Water yeah. Things. It. Yeah. It trickles right down from that side to this side. Yeah. Because I'm looking at the figures you got up here now for you know you gallons used this year. You know, over thirty, almost thirty nine million, and last year before thirty two and a half. So sixteen thousand times three hundred sixty five over there. Now you're up over another. Come on, Cal, got another another five million or so. <laughs> so <laughs> they'll have an impact yeah. on, on the wells and, and yeah. the oceans and everything. Are those what is that when they when this all gets completed and the, and you know the system's shut, basically disconnected or whatever they're going to do, uh, just dissolve that district. Are those wells going to stay with the system? Or do we call onto those as backup wells? No. We're not, the wells, they're, they're doing, the wells are staying with them. Okay. We can't, we looked into using them as backup wells. Yeah. And talk, but talking with Nicholas, I mean, Maybe if we pay, maybe if you got somebody in there and you fractured or you dug them deeper or something, but his wells, I mean, his big wells, what, Georgia, two inch? Yeah, they're, they're just four inch wells, you know, and there's a small pump, a re regular house pump way down at the bottom. Yeah, that's all they got, yeah. Yeah, and for what minimal you could, with wells they have now, what minimal we could pull out of them to actually pull that water out, then we'd have to treat it. We'd have to filter it. Then we'd have to get a line from there back up to the tank. <laughs> it just, yeah, you know, I mean, in our mind, it just wasn't feasible to do it. I, I, the only reason I mentioned that is because I, you know, if if the day comes, like you, know, you mentioned, we're down looking at the well, is, you know, what if you, this system needs to expand production, get another well in? New site approval is, you don't want to go there with the EP if you got an existing well that's already approved. That's all. That's also, all. those right. are rock. Those are rock wells. Those are rock wells. That's, I don't know. I don't know what the yield are and all that. But I, I, I've I've seen people systems, small systems around the, especially up north, basically you know nix off a well that they thought might be problematic and then try to get a new one and find out that you know well, gee, new source approval need a four hundred foot you know radius around the well. Of land that you want to control, and then you start doing the math on that. It's like something over eight acres. You know, <laughs> it's a lot of land, uh, and it can be very expensive. And then you got to get approval and all this other stuff. So I was asking the question, wondering if that well is worth holding on to as an emergency backup, so you can use it as you know. Well, the other thing is, is I don't. Is there is it one of the three wells is actually on their own land? Because I know one of them's definitely not on their land <laughs> yeah i mean it, well see, I, just see, I wouldn't know that good. you'd probably know that rule does the does the zone one does the 400 feet go towards existing wells too doesn't it well they right, want you got, everybody's got those little magic i used to call them uh, fried eggs the fried yeah, egg see, approach is you get your zone one your zone two and not having a hydrogen geologic analysis it's just the circle's diameter based on, on yeah. how much you So you never, where their wells are, you, I don't think some of them, I don't think you could get 50 feet. You probably can't, but see the catch is only, if it's already a pre-approved public water supply source, it's on their list as acceptable. Yeah. If you take it offline and close it down and then you want it to reopen it, it would be a whole new source approval and you would never get it approved. But yeah. if it's there, even if it's got a freaking gas station right next door to it, but it's an approved source, you have it as emergency backup, you'd have to sample bacteria, a couple things, you know, periodically 
yeah so it was good to go and but then you could put it online if you wanted with with the foreign agent whatever was appropriate uh, that's all i'm saying i mean I, if it's not worth if the production of it and the quality of the water is not worth it then it's not worth it Plus, well no think, we, that's yeah what we looked at was that i mean they definitely if if we did save them and use them even as backup wells, we'd have to put a filter system in because they got the same manganese like we do. And now with the booster pumps, you'd have to to get, I don't know, what do you think it'd cost, George, to get a pipe from their pump house up to our tank? <laughs> it's, it's all blasting. <laughs> Quite a bit because there's so much ledge there. You know, you'd have oh, to cross... It'd be ledge in, in yeah. swamp. Yeah. Just to get the permit to put a pipe through there would be oh. quite a big deal. Yeah, that you have Chris, to run the, run the water down to the existing filter plant down, you know, at, at the wells now. So, Plus, the district right. wants to sell that land and put it back toward the, all their tie-in fees. Yeah. So, the yeah. other thing is, I was talking with Wayne about uh, where we could put in another well, and just a little bit west of where the tank is, there's people up on that hill that got an unbelievable amount of water coming down off that hill with their wells. Yeah. And so in the future, I'd like to deal, you know, drill a six inch well and just see how much water we have, you know, just a little west of the tank. That could be another source. So you got enough land there to, to you own and control. Well, we'd oh. have to purchase some land, but. Yeah, you got to purchase it, but it's, where me and George are thinking, John, if you look on Google Maps, look up just above the tank. Back to Google yeah. Maps, I go. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's nothing there for houses or nothing. Yeah. I mean, so you could get it. There it is. It goes yeah, quite it, steep there because I remember yeah. walking up through there when we originally put the tank in with Paul. Apparently, the Boy Scouts used to work, walk up in there all the time. Yeah. That's where we were thinking of looking. Because they looked, I mean, George would be able to tell you better, but they went, when they were looking for these original wells, they started way down by White Birch Campgrounds, right, George? And kind of came all the way down. Yeah, we had uh, Kaufman and Richardson out of Boston. They did all kinds of seis seismic. Uh. They would put all kinds of sensors in the ground and then set off a little stick of dynamite. Yep. And somehow the sound waves from the blast would tell them, you know, what the level of the ground underneath. And they came all the way south, and that's why we ended up where we are. It, I don't know if you know where LaSalle Florist is? Yeah. Well, you get up that far, and already we're running out of water. It's just that little area where we are right now is where all the water is. Yeah, you got you got stuff tunneling down through some formation, old riverbed or something coming down off the hills. Well, yeah, I don't know what they they out. said it was Lake Hitchcock or something. Oh yeah, the old Lake. Think... Lake. Uh, it's an interesting phenomenon. I mean, you know, I, I was I told friends of mine when we moved down. I said, "What do you guys?" I said, "Well, we're living in an old lake bed." They go, "What?" Well, just yeah. Google Lake, lake Hitchcock and, and start nosing around, and you can learn more about it. So all those layers of clay, from, uh, the fi the finds that were deposited under the ice, but it's it's a uh, it's interesting terrain. That's yep. one of the reasons I'm here. But, uh, but to have that source that you have, we have, that's such a good yielding well with, you know, good water quality other than it's got iron and manganese. But, you know, welcome to New England. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, nothing new. Uh, yep. You know, my, when, I, when I bought my, the house I had in West Berlin, New Hampshire, was, the guy showed me some water quality. He had water tests when I, we bought the house. And, and uh, it was in 93, I guess. And I asked if they had a test. I figured you have a bacteria test and he showed me basic water chemistry. And I saw this pH of eight and iron and manganese almost non-existent. And, and I was just like grinning from ear to ear in the back of my mind because I, I don't have to treat this water. It didn't, yeah. doesn't mean anything. You know, it's like this, this soft water with no minerals in it. Like, Ta-da, in New England, I mean, what, what, it's so rare, you know. Uh, literally up and down this valley and especially in, in like uh, Brattleboro, had wells there just outside of town and the, the meadows along the West River, they basically shut them down because so much iron in wasn't worth using them. And they're treating muddy water from up on the hills. Yeah. Like you go all the way up the valley and you see all these towns that you think they'd have wells in the Connecticut River Valley because of the deep sediments and they don't because it's just crappy water or it's so many fines, you can't get it out. 
And it's like like all that clay, you just can't get any water out of it. You can't get water into it. So yeah. however water is getting to these wells, you know, probably someone from up in the hills, it's, it's got that iron and manganese from the bedrock of the fine Goshen stone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's filling the, the, the aquifer down there very nicely. Like when I saw that, you know, this, this summer, you said the levels don't even drop in the well. They're pumping all oh. that water and it's not dropping yeah. in the well. That's pretty hardly. That's remarkable. You know, so. Anyway, not to divert the things. I just was curious about the, the you know, the, the old district well. And, yeah, no, that's just because that got that was one of the things got brought up when we were going through all this, and it just didn't seem, yeah, you know, I mean, feasible for the amount we could get out of the things and what it would cost once yeah. you got it out to add it to our system. What well, makes sense if you know if, if in long range planning, another source is is needed. Then you know if, if that's a likely site up there by the tank, then you know looking at land availability and whether you can get a hold of it, you know even you know sooner rather than later is not a bad idea. Uh, well, no, that's right. When would we start throwing this around? Last year I brought it up. Yeah. Right, George. Yeah. Because well, it was during the summer, or whenever, and then, you know what I mean we just brought up. We've seen the use going up. We've seen every year houses and houses are coming into town. It's like no. Yeah. We got to start thinking of and pot houses somewhere now. else to get water. <laughs> yeah, we ha we have a permit from Northampton to get water out of Air Reservoir, yep. but you got to install a filtration plant and you have to pipe it, and that cost yeah, is always, pretty much prohibitive. But we still yeah, have you, the option. Yeah, you still you always have that in your back end. We can take. If I'm just. The number was way it's close to three hundred thousand gallons a day yeah. out of that pipe. Yeah, yeah, it's but, weird because Whiteley has three reservoirs, and no, no, none no. of them are ours. Right, they're not the Hamptons. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you know, uh, well, I don't know what Northampton's demands are, and I don't know anything about that system other than you know, see the treatment plant up there on Haydenville Road, and then, so the water's going in there, and you can run a pipe over the hill out of the treatment plant. They so they probably don't want to sell us treated water. Well, it, yeah, that's, I mean, the pipe we'd get it out of is out of the res, so it's untreated. Yeah, out of the reservoir, yeah, it, over it, yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, it's always a fallback way back if you really needed it, but I mean, what it would cost you to put a plant in to filter surface water. Oh, a lot. And then, and then pipe it from, you might also say, the farthest west point of town to the farthest east point of town. <laughs> be more than a whole bunch yeah <laughs> yeah the closest closest it gets to us would be weber road i would think coming down that back road where the camp hey uh, it's like i said george we can always we can always just dump it up in the brook up in west Waitley and then <laughs> suck it back out of westbrook when it gets down here <laughs> you want to get away with that <laughs> <laughs> Well, we need to, out with Connecticut River into the Quab and then you get anywhere. Yeah, we we wouldn't have to run no pipe. We'll just use the river. We'll use <laughs> nature. <laughs> well, that's what Northampton did. They dumped it into the brook by the reservoir there, and it ran, well, probably what a half a mile beside yeah. the road. And finally they piped it. Yeah. But that was just, you know, what, maybe 10 years ago? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. What did we get on the bud the water rent the last time? One hundred and twenty thousand was it? The reading? Yeah. I remember we said it was going to be up over a hundred. But... Yeah, it was close to one thirty. One twenty one one hundred. So that's. I think that's... that was with a couple of them missing. So it's close. I mean, it'll be, it'll, it's close to like 125, 126. 40, almost $50,000 more than normal. Yeah. People like their green lawns and yeah. Normally that, that fall reading is like 85 to 90,000.
So the big deal is just get back on for, from Lucy and uh, the easement up on the hill. Yeah, that'd be, that'd I want to get that. Two big things. Yep, that and like I said, I want to get that the skid unit for up there put out in the bids. Figure out what it's going to take to get the damn electric poles in, but. And then as soon as Lucy has the permit app filled out for this one, get it out so we can get these pumps ordered as soon as possible. Which I don't think, I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the DP will just kind of push, you know what I mean? Not take so long for this to review this, because I mean, it's <clears throat> we ain't doing for the booster pump side of it, we're doing nothing different than what they rejected the first time, but putting the third pump in is why they rejected it. You right? So I yeah, mean, they because... should be fine with that. We're not changing anything but adding one more pump, which they wanted. So I'm hoping that goes through quick, and the filter side of it, I mean, I can't see why they would argue or reject that side of it because it's the same just filters. We're just adding to two put more. eight of them in. <laughs> yeah, and we're not changing anything else. We're just adding two more filters and adding the booster pump. So I'm hoping they just kind of, yep, go ahead. <laughs> You know they're not going to do that. Yeah, I know they're not going to do that, but <laughs> got to be in writing and all that crap. You got to shake the tree. Is McGrath the one who reviews it? No, Doug. Uh, Pain. Pain. Yeah, you'll have to call him up. You know, you just call him up every two days and bother him. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, thirty years of experience with these guys, it works. You just bother them. You just keep calling them, say, "I need this. I got to go." But you got to give them <laughs> the correct paperwork so they got something to look at. Right. Plus, I don't think you can call them anymore. You got to email them. Right? Oh, is that right? Oh, email that. Yeah. Well, you could call them, but they don't. I don't know. Well, you, voice, never, you voicemail and email. You just keep back. Yeah, them. yeah, they never really seem to answer their voicemails from the building that they they're never in anymore. <laughs> they get lots of them. Yeah. Well, like you say, the squeaky wheel gets oiled. Always does. You gotta, you gotta keep after them. I mean, you don't treat them like crap. I mean, if you if you establish a relationship with them and they kind of know you're, you're straight up and honest and good guy, they'll they'll deal with you. But anyway. But we gotta make a motion to adjourn. Sure. So move. Second it, third of it, and depends how technical you want to be. <laughs> it's how it's how you write it up. <laughs> I just got to get my secretary to see how to get out of here. The red button. I don't see any red buttons. Here. The left hand corner of your screen is a little left where the red circle yeah. is. Down on the yeah, yeah, down, I see down it. On the Leave. Bottom. Yeah, yeah. All right, all set. Good enough then. Have a good all day, right. guys. Bye right. <clears throat> bye. Bye.